In this segment, we're going to bridge from the idea of attention, which has a single query indexing over a set of keys, to the idea of self-attention, which is going to be the mechanism in a transformer that processes an entire sequence at once. So self-attention takes each word in a sequence, or each vector, and it assigns that vector both roles of key and query at the same time. So it's going to use the same idea of attention that we saw before, but kind of extended. And the way we're going to start introducing it is to look at these things as matrices. So Q is going to be a sequence length by D matrix, where D is going to be our embedding dimension. And uh, for the purposes of these slides, that's going to be 2. And the keys, again, each word or vector is a both a key and a query, so the keys and the queries are going to be the same size. So keys are also sequence length by D. So now we have uh, basically many uh, queries at the same time. Now, in order to kind of represent the fact that what we're looking for and what each token is are not the same thing, we're going to dive right back into that idea we saw of multiplying these by matrices to kind of transform them. So we're going to set up a matrix here, WQ, that we're going to multiply Q by. And that's going to take this form. It's going to have uh, basically 0, 1 in both rows. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell us that no matter what the value of this particular token is, we're going to look for Bs, which correspond to the second uh, kind of position in our, in our vector space. And we're going to go back to the idea of using this WK diagonal matrix uh, that kind of boosts the scale of the embeddings that we're dealing with. So because we're multiplying Q and K by these two matrices, and because ultimately they're going to get multiplied by each other, there are actually many different equivalent parameterizations that are going to do exactly the same thing that we're seeing here. I'm just kind of setting up this one to sort of illustrate things, but in reality, what a model learns through backpropagation is not going to have this nice clear structure. Okay, so let's kind of go through what happens in each of these steps. So the first thing that we do is we compute, uh, well, we're going to compute our matrix Q based on the embeddings being multiplied by WQ. And what that gives you is it gives you this matrix where every row is the same. Like we said, the kind of semantics of this is that every single token is going to be looking for, all right, are there other Bs around? Remember, that's our kind of objective here if we're thinking about making predictions. And then the keys get the same treatment but they're multiplied by this WK matrix. And what that does is it just scales up the uh, raw embeddings in E. All right, so now the scores are going to be computed in the same way that they were before. Uh, we're basically taking an inner product between the queries and the keys, but now we're doing it by just multiplying these matrices together. And so if we want to kind of break it down in terms of an individual component in one of these matrices, uh, we end up with the ijth value of this S matrix that we're, going to about, that we're about to compute is going to be qi dotted with kj. So essentially, in some sense, measuring the compatibility or the similarity of the ith query and the jth key. So it turns out if you go through this computation, you get a matrix that looks like this. It's going to be a square matrix because uh, the sort of dimensions of these things that we're multiplying, we're multiplying by a 4 by 2 by a 2 by 4. And we're going to end up with every row being the exact same thing. And the rows represent attention scores. So 
if we think about uh, kind of row one, it's saying I care about word three, right? That's kind of what this row here is telling us. Um, and when we softmax this, we're going to see that it puts a high probability distribution there, or a high probability in that point of the distribution. And this is what we wanted, right? Because our original uh, sort of sequence here, A, A, B, A, uh, what we care about is finding the B, and it turns out we've now successfully cooked up this self-attention computation where now we have a distribution at each position that's a kind of placing high probability mass on the B token. And we did it all uh, with these kind of linear operations and then uh, ultimately this kind of softmax, uh, which is going to turn this into a distribution uh, per row. So yeah, so this is a row-wise softmax in this matrix. All right, so then the final step here is we compute the output, which is just going to be this matrix A, uh, which is formed through the softmax, times E. And I'm going to kind of put a little asterisk here, which is that this is actually going to be A times E times WV. So we're going to use a separate so-called values matrix to transform the embeddings before we multiply them and take this kind of weighted sum with the, uh, with the probability matrix here, the attention matrix A. So what that basically gives us is uh, the formula that is given in Vaswani et al. for the attention computation. We've kind of gone through all the different steps of this. So their formula involves Q, K, and V, which are computed based on uh, the kind of input embeddings like we've been doing, uh, multiplying by these parameter matrices W, Q, W, K, and W, V. And we take this softmax of Q times K transpose, so that we've all seen. And then there's one extra little step that they do here, which is they divide and rescale everything by square root of DK, uh, which is the basically vector dimension that all of these uh, inner products are happening in. It basically just has the uh, effect of making the softmax less peaked. It's not too important. And then they multiply by V here in order to get the output. So they're taking their uh, attention matrix A and multiplying that by V. And so what they're getting is the output is a uh, kind of weighted combination of V. So this is what we call one head of self-attention. So we're going to talk about multi-head self-attention a little bit later. Uh, but the key thing here is that this is not some just like uniform, non-parameterized computation. It's parameter par parameterized by these matrices W, Q, W, K, and W, V. So as you change those matrices through uh, learning and things like that, what this computation does changes as well. All right, so in terms of what this produces, like I've been saying, we get this square attention matrix A, which is the output of the softmax here. Uh, so this is what's been giving us our, our attentions A. And then we multiply that by the input or this transformed form of the input. And ultimately, it gives us something that's the same dimension as the input. So we've gone through all this, all this kind of complexity here, but the idea of self-attention or the, the API for it is in some sense very simple, which is that you take a sequence of words and then you get back a new sequence of vectors, which are the same length as the original sequence, that now represent those words in context. And so we have this very powerful general purpose transformation that can kind of contextualize uh, representations of structured data. All right, so we've gone through all the steps kind of mathematically. There's this very nice uh, blog post by Jay Alomar called The Illustrated Transformer, which is going to walk through it all uh, kind of graphically. So I'm just going to show this here and talk through it really quickly. Um, you can go read the blog post in more detail if you want to see a, a, another breakdown. But 
Basically, we have a length two sequence. Thinking machines are the two words, and so we have two embedding vectors. And then uh, we have these three matrices, WQ, WK, and WV, that are going to embed these. And ultimately, we get Qs, Ks, and Vs, which are uh, now two by three because we've kind of gone from vector dimension four to vector dimension three uh, with these matrix multiplies. And now the softmax operation produces a uh, kind of attention matrix, which we're not seeing, and then we multiply that by V, and as output, we get this matrix Z. So uh, this attention matrix, again, is sentence length by sentence length, so you see that we're multiplying a, a 2 by 3 by a 3 by 2, so we're going to end up with a 2 by 2. And then we get a sentence length by hidden dimension as the output. Uh, and it's a weighted combination of the rows of V. So just to show one more uh, kind of representation of this attention uh, computation, this is an example of a kind of character level classification task that, and we visualized the attention matrix that's in kind of one part of a transformer for this task. And so again, what we see is that we have a square matrix where each cell is a probability, and these probability distributions sum to one over the rows. So kind of higher or sort of brighter colors or higher values. So you could see that uh, when there's like a white cell in the row, the, the rest of the row is very faint, um, but you can have a like number of red cells if the distribution is more uniform. So finally, kind of bringing things back around to why are we using this kind of self-attention mechanism? Why did we beat up on RNNs a little bit? Well, the nice properties that self-attention has are the following. The first is that it doesn't involve any so-called sequential operations. The whole thing is fully parallelizable, right? If you have a thousand tokens, each one has to attend to 999 other things, but all of that happens in parallel. Um, so you just put everything through that layer, and there's no order of 1,000 um, sequential dependence in your computation, com computation. You also can kind of see every other token with a distance of 1, right? Like the word at position 847 can see the position at, you know, 200, word at position 232. So you can access and figure out information from the context a lot more easily than something like an RNN, where you have to kind of go through all the different steps to pass the information along. Um, that said, the big kind of drawback of uh, self-attention as it's presented here is this n-squared uh, complexity, right? We have to form these matrix, this attention matrix that's sequence length by sequence length, that's going to be big, hard to store, it's going to be a lot of memory. There's a lot of subsequent work that's kind of tried to make this better, and we're going to talk about some of that uh, a little bit later. But that's sort of the one drawback, but other than that, there's a lot of uh, kind of benefits of this architecture compared to others that we've seen. That's the end of this segment.